final week in the series. Uh, just looking at those questions, there is a poll for yourself. Do you take a multivitamin? Do you take a fish oil or flaxseed oil supplement? So that's for your omega-3 fat, which we went over last week. Um, do you take a probiotic? So this is looking at digestion and good gut flora. Um, and do you take any super greens, alkalizing greens, chlorella, spirulina, or a similar product? So something that maybe goes in your smoothies or in your salads, um, that sort of thing that adds in green vegetables and good nutrients from, from greens. Um, as well as, you know, helps to alkalize the body if you've got otherwise a high acid diet, which we touched on, and we'll go a little more in detail tonight. So, yeah, that's just really to, for me to get a gauge of who, who has what, and gives me a good idea. So, um, we're going to start tonight on, let me just click my thing. Oh, there we go. Close this week. Right, so cellular nutrition and systemic inflammation. So cellular nutrition that you know is an easy gauge of what that might be. Nutrition of the cells. Systemic inflammation is somewhat more difficult. So we're looking at chronic inflammation really, um, which I believe is pretty much how a lot of people eat nowadays, which is inflammatory foods. So your easy to know inflammatory foods are sugar, refined sugar, um, high acid foods, so dairy and, and meat products, processed specifically. Um, and an easy way to think about it is when you're unwell, if you've ever had a flu or um, bronchitis or something like that, those generally are not the foods you feel like eating because they create more inflammation in the body. Um, and often people want citrus fruits or um, light things, you know, like um, soups, you know, chicken broth and that sort of thing, which are more often there's, you know, good, good nutrients in there, um, good minerals and alkalizing things or things that will add antioxidants to the body. And that's really what we're looking at in terms of how to reduce inflammation. And it's a natural response for the body to, to crave specific foods during certain times of the year, um, during um, certain times of, of your own health journey, you know, if you are feeling unwell or if you're feeling really strong and that sort of thing. So that's why, you know, the food journaling aspect of this course is really, really important because it allows you, A, the opportunity to form a great habit which is to track that which you wish to improve um, and that applies across the board in terms of your life and also um, the awareness of what foods trigger which response within your own body and also which foods um, are things that you're craving that are perhaps not serving you and those foods which your body naturally craves when you're in, in whatever hot, cold, weather, stressful situations or not um, and well, well, that sort of thing. So really, really good. Um, and for me, um, as a nutrition coach, I would ask for a food journal from somebody in order to help them better because when people write down at the time that they eat, I've got a much better and more accurate um, detail of, of how they are rather than going from memory because people have selective memories when it comes to what they, what they eat. Okay, so um, this section this week is going to be fairly um, fairly light because it is quite intensive to understand. So um, we're going to start just from preventing systemic inflammation. So the first thing I want to I want you to understand is reducing exposure to things that cause free radical damage. So free radicals. This is the key word. I want to show you an image here. So this is, when you think about free radicals, it kind of is it's thrown around a lot, that term, what is free radicals and how do we avoid them? They are a natural occurring part of life. We cannot avoid free radicals, but we can prevent the damage and the stress to ourselves and our body inside and out purely by our lifestyle. So we can help prevent damage. 
Um, so typically, you know, if you're looking at eyes, then people have cat cataracts, degeneration, um, fatty deposits in the eyes, that sort of thing. Cardiovascular, it's very easy to know. Um, heart attacks, stroke, high blood pressure, these are really common things, which is most unfortunate because it's not normal to have this amount of, you know, stri strokes and heart attacks and these sorts of things are kind of like one and three to two and three in this country. And it's quite, that's quite scary if you ask me. I know people who most tragically, in my opinion, um, have had heart attacks very, very young in their 20s. And that is not because of some genetic something that is purely through overwork and stress and, and the lifestyle. So, um, but free radical damage is the cause. Um, skin, acne, wrinkles, aging, and, and skin irritations, lungs, asthma and allergies, this sort of thing, bronchitis and so on. Um, when you think of stress on your cells and on your organs, then it is a it is a degeneration of sorts. It is a breaking down of that which that that organ or that that cell which makes up the organ that um, that we're really looking at, and that is what we're hoping to prevent. Um, diabetes, chronic fatigue, anything to do with basically any disease in the body. Disease, not ease. Disease is down to um, a breakdown of sorts. Immune. I mean, look, any of these things here, cold and flu even, you know, arthritis, breaking down of the of the joints and the bones, the minerals in there. Um, this is all free radical damage. And and if I were to explain to a six year old what free radical damage and oxidative stress looks like, then a simple example is if you take an avocado, or they might not even know what an avocado is, so say an apple. If you take an apple and you cut it in half and you leave it on the bench, then what will happen to it? It'll go brown. So that going brown is because of the air and the light getting to the apple, which was previously protected by a skin, and it is breaking it down. If you left the apple on the bench top with the skin on and didn't cut it in half, it would still break down over time, but it wouldn't take as long. So the skin is kind of preventing it much like the paint on your car. If you scratch the car, it's going to rust unless you paint over it again. So that rusting is caused by free radical damage, oxidative stress. And in and, and free radical damage, I mean, you can get free radicals, oh gosh, everywhere. Um, if you are stressed out, if you are too tired, if you eat fatty foods, sugary foods, um, if you have an alcoholic beverage or a sugary drink, a coffee, um, if you have uh, too much sunlight, excessive sunlight, like UV damage, sunburn, that's free radical damage. Um, if you have, gosh, um, smoking, um, medicines that are toxic, I mean, they fix things, but they're also causing damage to other parts of the body. Um, what else do we have? Gosh, radiation, I mean, look around, there's like electromagnetic magnetic fields, bizarre kind of in our lives now, you know, with, with microwaves and um, all sorts of screens and Wi-Fi, everything and, and all of this. Though all of this stuff, all of this, I mean, exercise even, which is really good for the body. Exercise also causes some level of free radical damage, which is, you know, the the tearing of the muscle in order to for it to grow stronger. So we, and also just the hormones. I mean, you know, we've got all manner of hormones going on and responses going on in our bodies. And when you consider that this is a normal part of life, um, an unavoidable part of life, then it's kind of like, oh gosh, how can we, how can I prevent myself from creating this dis-ease and potentially any one of these things? And none of them are good. Even if it's something as small as a cold, it's not nice to have cold frequently. I can tell you that much. I know that much. It's not nice to have hay fever. It's not nice to have um, allergies to food and so on. It's not nice to have um, a lack of mental clarity. You know, it's not even the big things, the heart attacks, the cancers, the strokes. It's all these little things as well that make life just a little more difficult to live. So there is a way to prevent 
these free radicals from, from causing damage. So I want to just show you another image there. Welcome, Liz, as well. Um, so we talked about antioxidants and where we find them. So in those beautiful, colorful vegetables and fruits and things, and also in, um, in your multivitamins and so on. So when you have your happy antioxidant here, so you have all of these e extra electrons, these extra ones here, what happens is when a free radical comes along, see how you've got two, 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 and then this one here is going to be stolen away, this becomes an unpaired electron. So it doesn't have its pair. And what antioxidants do is they float around and they donate an extra an, an extra electron to the free to the one that is now had, you know, free it's a free radical. It's is therefore unstable because it's not in balance. Um, it donates and therefore it retains its balance and therefore doesn't break down, it doesn't have damage. So this is like the basic, you know, I'm not Mrs. Science. So this is like as basic as it can be. Just know that free radicals are unpaired electrons and that antioxidants have an abundance of electrons to donate to these, these um, unstable electrons and therefore bringing life into balance again and, and preventing the breakdown and degeneration of your cells. And your cells, if you recall from the first session, your cells are the building blocks of you, of your life, of your blood and your bones and your organs and your skin and your hair and your eyes and your everything. Everything about you is first the cell. So it's pretty cool just to know, just to know that. Um, and antioxidant itself, antioxidant, so oxidative stress is you know, this is the anti of that. It's anti-oxidative stress. So it's easy to remember. Okay. Um, any questions about what I've said so far, please do write it in the old box there. Um, it can be quite full on this session. So in your books, just turn to page 55 and you're looking at how to reduce exposure to things that cause free radical damage like. Um, so what are some of the things that cause free radical damage? I just listed about 10 different things there. So note down some of the ones that are maybe prevalent in your life or ones that you didn't know about. So um, as I said again, high fatty foods, processed stuff, sugar, um, caffeine, smoking, alcohol, excessive sunlight, um, that sort of thing. Those are what we're looking here, looking at here. Reducing exposure to those things, which is one of the three ways to prevent systemic inflammation, which is inflammation on the cellular level of the body and therefore the breakdown of its cells and systems. Number two, eat to reduce inflammation, which is, for example, reduce the bad fats like. And does anyone remember from last week what the bad fats were? Like the deadly fats starts with T. Anyone? All been quiet tonight? So trans fats. Trans fats are the deadly fats. These are the ones that um, that that are really unstable. These are good fats turn bad sort of thing. These are the ones that you find in um, in all your processed goods and your um you know the sort of shortenings and um high fructose corn syrup with this is sugar but you know can turn to fat bad fats as well um when you've taken a a good oil say a polyunsaturated fat and it's been cooked at high heat temperatures and turns into a um a rancid fat and therefore a trans fat things like that so reduce those bad flat fats. And what to look for on the label to know if it has trans fats in it? Look for um, the words um, hyd uh, hydrogenated oils or rehydrogenated oils. Um, you don't often see a, a label where it says fully hydrogenated. 
if it's fully, then it's actually a saturated fat, not a trans fat. But that's probably the easiest way. Shortening, um, cremelta, lard, dripping, that sort of thing. Um, those are often your, your trans fats. Sometimes it's just saturated fat, you know, butter and so on. But margarine, I would say, is a trans fat. Um, saturated fats, again, if you recall from last week, um, we do need on some level, but it's best to get them from plant sources if we can. Um, B, so increase the good fats like your polyunsaturated and your monounsaturated, so your omega 3s and your omega 6s. And C, eat a low glycemic diet that doesn't spike, spike the blood sugar. It's a bit of a tongue twister. So, as we mentioned in week four, so eating, um, sorry, in week three, eating low glycemic is eating to control your blood sugars. And that means you're not overproducing insulin, which is a fat storing hormone. You're producing glucagon, which is a fat releasing hormone. Um, and that also helps your body to maintain um, a good um, level of satiety. And you're able to um, yeah, monitor and maintain a good energy level. So that's what we're after. And number three, supplement with antioxidant and anti-inflammatory nutrients such as, so such as what? What are some, some nutrients that, that you can, that are antioxidants? One that I talked about earlier, which is really, really common when people are unwell, they go out and buy bags and bags of mandarins. Because why? Because they know that vitamin C is a powerful antioxidant. Uh, another really, really powerful one is vitamin E. And vitamin E, I mean, to get it from food, you'd have to eat truckloads and truckloads of spinach or almonds or wheat germ. And it's impossible to do that because the, the, the number is so high. For example, 74 cups of, of spinach a day. And I like my spinach, but I'm not going to eat that much, you know. Um, just to get your daily dose, your 400 international units of vitamin E per day. So it's, it's a wonderful thing that in this day and age we can get a pure clean supplement of that and know that we're getting what our daily needs are and, and therefore supporting the prevention of systemic inflammation. For my own personal um, experience, living a life of relative health. I mean, I wasn't someone who drank or smoked or anything like that. So um, I didn't have those sorts of things um, wreaking havoc to my system. but um, you know, my diet wasn't overly amazing and I didn't have a whole lot of, um, well, I didn't have months and months where I wasn't free of, of some level of disease. So it was always a cold or a flu or a bronchitis or a this or a that. And, and that was just because my lifestyle was very, very stressful at that time. I lived a very um, high profile and um, intensive job. And I also um, lived in quite a, a toxic area in terms of pollution and so on, which is also causing free radical damage. And um, I didn't, didn't eat well enough. I mean, what I thought I was doing was eating well, but I wasn't getting a lot of antioxidants or alkalizing foods. So, and that was before I understood anything about supplementation. So, um, for me now, fast forwarding many, many years, I can see how much my health has improved just by one small thing every day and eating in supplements was probably the biggest game changer for me. Biggest game changer because I haven't been sick in four years. So after being sick every three months, I can tell you it's quite a blessing. Um, any questions on that, please do jot them in the box. So scrolling down, right. Here's the little, um, the little, the next little thing, fill in the gaps and for you to get your head around. So when you, when your blood sugar spikes, this is what happens. Excessive something, something are created. So this is your point to jump in there. What are created? What is it we've been talking about? That's with F and R free radicals so excessive free radicals are created the free radicals oxidize the what 
What do they oxidize? Any ideas? Any ideas? I'm going to leave it open to to the people. No, no, no. Okay. It was a bit of a hard one. The LDL cholesterol, so your bad cholesterol, the low density lipoproteins. So if it, and it's got there in brackets making it sticky. So free ra radicals oxidize the cholesterol, the LDL cholesterol, making it sticky. Number three, this damages the endothelium lining. And just to let you know what the endothelium lining is, is the blood vessel wall. So I'm just going to show you a weak image there. I'm pretty sure I've got an image. Here we go. Um, that's probably not the best one right now. Okay. So the endothelium lining, the blood vessel wall. So this interior here, this is an artery, right? So, and your lipoproteins, your cholesterol particles, it's got it showing up, building up begins, plaque forms. I think this one here as well showed you um, a better one. So, blood cells, cholesterol, and healthy arterial wall, the endothelium lining is this blood vessel wall here, i.e. where the blood vessels flow through. And if you have cholesterol build up, i.e. it's been oxidized by free radicals and therefore it's become sticky and it's stuck to the inside of the arterial wall, then you can have this plaque build up and, I mean, that blockage there. So this is progressively getting unhealthy and healthy. It's not after one meal that's not good for you. It's after many, many meals um, and free radical damage coming in and not having enough antioxidants, not having um, that those unpaired electrons being paired up again and, um, and balanced out. So it's not just what you eat, it's, it's many other things as well. Um, it's quite a scary image really when you think your blood vessels are supposed to flow through there and your cholesterol is supposed to flow through there and, and if it gets blocked, comes a point that that's a blocked artery and well, there we go, heart attack on its way. Um, so free radicals oxidize the, the LDL cholesterol, making it sticky, which damages the endothelium lining, which is the blood vessel wall. Number four, the damaged endothelium cannot make as much nitric oxide as our arteries need. So think of nitric, nitric oxide as a relaxant, you know, able to let out our arteries um, relax and, and have, have everything flow through nicely. Number five, so the small arteries go into spasm. Yeah, that's totally ugly, isn't it, Sherry? Um, small arteries go into spasm. And if you imagine after a high sugar meal, your arteries spasming can spasm for up to four hours. I mean, that's a ridiculously long time. And a spasm, you know, if you've ever had like your eye twitch where it's like really, really small, but kind of annoying, it's like, that's like a, a little spasm, right? Or sometimes it's here or like here or something. Imagine your arteries doing that for a really long time. Like, that's just horrible. Um, so your arteries are in spasm. This makes it difficult, this is number six, makes it difficult for insulin to pass through this pass to the cell to get the sugar out of the blood. So remember, insulin, even though I said that's a fat storing hormone, um, it has a job to do. And that job is to take sugar out of the blood and send it around the body to the right places. When insulin becomes a problem is if your your muscle cells are no longer able to receive the sugar and therefore it sends to your fat cells and the problem is that your body becomes resistant to its own insulin rather than sensitive to it um, because your pancreas having to overproduce insulin in order to get sugar out of the blood and um, when you're constantly eating on that roller coaster cycle. So if your body overproduces insulin that's when it causes a problem but in normal normal healthy bodies insulin does its job and, and that's not a problem. Um, so number seven there, the pancreas has to make more what? To try and pound the sugar into the cell. Insulin. This is what we're saying. 
So if it's difficult for insulin to pass to the cell to get the sugar out of the blood, the pancreas makes more insulin to try and pound the sugar into the cell and then do its job quick because you cannot have sugar in the blood. You cannot. It has to go to the muscle cells, to the organs, to the fat cells, away, away from the blood. And number eight, all this extra insulin causes us to gain weight since insulin is the fat storing hormone. And with extra insulin, we cannot produce glucagon, glucagon, which is the fat burning hormone. So, yeah, that there, that is, that is what happens. So, the best thing is if you can, and I believe, if we just click over onto this page, describe in your own words how systemic inflammation may be keeping you from losing weight. Just go through that little scenario right there and put it in terms that you understand. Are there any questions on what I've just said about arteries, endothelium linings, cholesterol, anything like that? If there's anything, please holler at me. Okay. We can avert this whole process by doing two things. Simply two things. A, not spiking our blood sugar. Very simple. I've taught you how to do that by eating low glycemic foods and and being mindful of how you how you live your life so that you're going to have sugars and things that are high glycemic, i.e. high a spike your blood sugars high, then you're going to support your body um, so that it will um, curb the ill effects of that. And B, effectively neutralizing the free radicals before this cascade of damage gets started by taking a high potency um, antioxidant. So, as I said, so neutralizing is by doing this. Antioxidant is going to donate, and therefore that's neutralized. It's no longer a free radical, it's no longer unstable. And the easy way to do that. Just take your take your antioxidants. So um, if you are someone who is taking a high potency um, multivitamin, then you'll know you'll have um, antioxidants in there, and and that's going to set you on your way. So a few questions: What causes cholesterol to become sticky and adhere to our artery walls? Can anyone remember? Just to check your understanding here. Anyone? What causes cholesterol to become sticky and adhere to our artery walls? Yes, yeah, so trans fat. So um, trans fats being something that causes free radical damage. But the, uh, yeah, it's it's all of those things. It's all those things, Sherry. Thank you for. If I just go back up here. Um, so things that cause free radical damage, um, those are the things that that make the the cholesterol sticky. So it's the free radicals being oxidized. So your trans fats, your sunlight, your all, you know, your your alcohols and your all those things that cause free radical damage, rather create free radicals. Those are the things that make that oxidize. Yeah. Um, what can neutralize the free radicals so they cannot oxidize the cholesterol and make it sticky? What neutralizes? What's the buzzword that neutralizes that you will get from your multivitamins? Antioxidants. Antioxidants. So that's the word there. Antioxidants. All right, moving to the archives of internal medicine reported in an eye-opening study in April 2005 where patients treated with cholesterol-lowering statin drugs showed a what percent decrease death rate. So statin, you know, this is quite common to have um, statin drugs to lower cholesterol because people believe that if they lower their cholesterol, um, it'll be better. But if I show you this image again, um, if you have less cholesterol flowing through there, does it really matter? 
No, it does not really matter. Um, what's going to matter is how it flows. So it doesn't matter if you've got a lot in here, um, it's whether or not it flows through. So even if you had, if all of these were cholesterol, if, if this is a free passage, a free channel, and you don't have free radicals causing the cholesterol to stick to the walls and form into plaque, then isn't, isn't that going to be a healthy artery? Does it really matter if you've got cholesterol in there, so long as it flows freely and goes to where it's supposed to go? Not really. Um, it's about having a good balance of your good cholesterol and bad cholesterol, and allowing it to flow through the arteries freely by having a, a healthy, healthy system. Just to, clear, to be clear on that. So, um, statistics here. Patients treated with cholesterol lowering statin drugs showed a 22% decreased death rate. And patients treated with fish oil supplements showed a 32% reduction in death. 32% reduction in death. But which was shown to be more effective at lowering cholesterol? Which one? At lowering cholesterol, not decreasing in death. The, the thing is that Statin drugs is more effective at lowering cholesterol. But if you check here, if fish oil supplements don't lower cholesterol, statin drugs do, then why do they lower the death rates more? Why do they, why is it a 22 to a 32 percent reduction in death when fish oils do not lower cholesterol as effectively? The reason is that it's not about low cholesterol, it's about the, the, the health of the cell, it's about the health of the arteries, it's about how um, cholesterol flows through those arteries, whether it's high or low is, is besides the point if you're looking at reduction in death. Fascinating isn't it? I think we hold a little differently in, in the media. Over half the people who have heart attacks have normal cholesterol levels and that's, that's in the studies which again is dramatic. Um, what's a better indicator of heart disease if cholesterol is not the best predictor? What's a better indicator of heart disease if cholesterol is not the best predictor? Anyone know? Give you a clue at the topic of today. Inflammation. Inflammation is the best indicator of heart disease because inflammation, if you know what that is, um, this, this is it. Inflammation is, you know, when you've got like if you've um an easy way to think about it is if you've if you've ever um bumped yourself and got it swollen up you know or you've hurt yourself or you've you've bruised or something your your body naturally gets inflamed and that is its healing process yes but also um if that were to stay if that were to stay there you know in your body then that isn't a good thing same if you have um if you have, say, uh, if you're eating a lot of sugar and so on, um, people who have, say, sore joints and sore back and so on, and, and I look at their diet and I say, well, you've got a lot of dairy and you've got a lot of sugar in there. If you cut those out, it's going to help reduce the inflammation in your body and if you have your body heal itself, then that's a start. But um, really, heart disease and any other of these, um, if I just go back to, this image, any one of these is down to systemic inflammation. So not just I've got a swollen arm, this is actually cellular, this is on a cellular level inflammation. So real damage. Um, you can improve, you can improve these things by taking high quality supplements and fish oils, gosh, fish oil is one of the most amazing um, supplements on the market. And the reason is that fish oils, they are like, they're critical to the cell of every, or of every single cell. You know, it's, it's amazing. It's not just about, well, I want to have better clarity or memory, or I want to have um, a, a good amount of omega-3s. It's actually down to like every single cell in your body is, is growing and using those to synthesize proteins and all sorts of processes going on. So really, really important. Um, last thing here, if you're taking a statin drug 
it is recommended that you supplement with CoQ10, so coenzyme Q10, because statin drugs, those cholesterol-lowering drugs, um, block the production of coenzyme in, in the body. So something in coenzyme, if you want to know what that is, um, the other week when we were looking at the, the mitochondria of the cell, those mitochondria, the coenzyme is in that, which is essentially the, the energy produced. So if, you, if your body doesn't produce that energy within the cell, then you're not going to have a lot of energy, really, are you? And so, I mean, you low, lower your cholesterol, which will lower the cholesterol. It won't help reduce your, um, your uh, statistic on whether or not you'll reduce um, death rate. But it will also mean that you're not going to have as much energy because your body can no longer produce naturally the energy it requires in every cell. Again, just ugh, drugs are bad, really, really bad. Any questions on that? There's a lot, a lot of information. Any questions? Okay, I'm going to skip ahead to um, the next page here. I'm not going to read this out. I do recommend you read this. This is amazing content here. So I've got the source of the article there, but um, this is a heart surgeon who speaks out about basically the, the disgrace that is the history of of the medical um, medical field. Um, you know, 25 years experience, um, and he's decided that he's going to speak out and, and understand why we are the way we are. Um, and one of the bits I've just emboldened on the next page is that injury and inflammation in our blood vessels is caused by the low-fat diet rec diet recommended for years by mainstream medicine. So that whole low-fat thing is, is a major problem because during that low-fat time, um, people replaced fat with sugar. And sugar is what caused inflammation in the body, and that's what's caused all of the problems. So fat is not the culprit. Um, I'm not saying go out and eat trans fat or an, an abundance of saturated fat, but do have the good fats. Um, but certainly sugar, sugar, sugar is, is really the problem. And there's so many movies and documentaries and these things coming out nowadays about sugar and the, the ill effects. And also the, the problem with, um, you know, looking long term for our young ones, our younger generation who, you know, come 20 years, we probably won't even see the fallout of, of the issues that are happening nowadays with, you know, sugary drinks and sugary everything, processed everything for children. But I just find it amazing that um, a man of his of his stature would would actually speak out about this. So do have a read of that. It's it's fascinating and yeah, very interesting guy. Um, before I move on, are there any questions about anything I've said? I realise that it's quite um, an intense topic, understanding this level. Any questions at all? I'll let you post some if you have any down there. Um, and recalling as well, you know, if you are concerned about, um, well, I don't know if I have the right kind of antioxidants, I don't know if I have enough of these vitamins, then ask me. Ask me what I take, ask me what what's good and ask me what's you know what's safe as well. Um, I have a really good checklist that you can use when you're um, investigating what's available in the marketplace and um, yeah it's it's just good to be informed really. Um, I don't have any more on this topic, so I'm going to shift to the appendices in the book um, and just briefly run through some things because um, this is really just your time to, to go through what interests you. I've put information 
information in there on digestive health, and there are some tips rushing women's digestion. But what that book has in there is just, and you know, we've got to bring everything to every reality. Um, what it is doing to us, what it is doing to our health. Another great book that Dr. Libby has is Accidentally Overweight, and that goes into the hormones as well, and and what hormones trigger what response, and and how some people are like, well, how can I not lose this weight? It's because of X, Y, and Z going on in your body. So that's on on digestive health, um, which is why I asked at the beginning um, if you take a probiotic. So um, the probiotics really are honestly like fish oils, antioxidants, and Probiotics, I think, are the most critical things to be taking in your in your daily regime. And for fish oil, sorry, for um, probiotics, if you don't take them every day, then at least every other day, absolutely. Um, I have a little bit of information here on food allergies and intolerances. And the second part of that is plateau busting. So plateau busting meaning um, if you've reached a plateau in your weight loss or um, or so on, then you know what to do to get out of that. Um, so food allergies, what I go through, just the difference between an allergy and an intolerance, because there are differences. Um, and these are some of the common ones, you know, chemicals and, and toxins and sulfites and so on and what they look like. Um, I've also gone into here about plateau busting, so, um, and I've put the, the resources there. Um, Fasting is an option. I myself have just finished a 19-day spiritual fast where I ate before sunrise and after sunset. And um, not only is it a great time for me to reflect on, on things in my life that are important, but also it gives my body a rest during the day. Um, and I eat really well because the, the times I have to eat are, are shorter. So it's, it's quite a, a good thing. There are many, many different kinds of fasts. I mean, you can do a three-day, you can do a 24-hour cleanse, you can do you know, um, juices and, and water and so on. I don't recommend things that are gimmicks, like a fasting diet gimmick thing, like drink lemon detox water or um, just for a week or, you know, do this or do that syrup or whatever. Um, the reason I don't recommend that is because you've got to make sure that what you're consuming during that time is serving you and it's not laden with sugar or chemicals. Um, if you are interested to find out more about fasting, I'm happy to share my experiences. I have put in some some other fasting options here. So, um, you know, a daily fast, eat, stop, eat, which is, you know, you fast for full 24 hours. Part of that, half of that 24 hours is whilst sleeping, um, things like that. So alternate days, and some people do, you know, the, the 500 calorie day and the weekend or something like that um, and just to note here if you're doing something extreme then please do speak to your GP because that's put just to, to make sure you know that what you're doing is, is okay for you so the truth about what truth about sugar and sweeteners oh my gosh basically just avoid artificial sweeteners like the plague if you're going to eat sugar have sugar that you know what it looks like and you know where it comes from, not a chemical that your brain cannot identify. Um, so many, this one is really bad. 200 times sweeter than sugar, really, zero calories. What that means is great for your waistline because there's no calories, but no, terrible for your health. Your brain cannot recognize it, does not understand it as not a, a sugar. And that just, yeah, it's not cool. It's not cool. Um, it's absorbed um, and it's excreted unchained. It's you'll see this in a lot of um, um, like bodybuilding type things as well, whey products and so on. Um, yeah, not ideal. Um, another one, oh, we don't see so much of that. Aspartame, worst one ever in my book. Aspartame, this number, get to see that, know that number nine five one. <laughs> um, that oh god, it's just horrible. Again, 200 times sweeter than sugar. Um, it, it crosses the blood-brain barrier and um, can form um, formaldehyde in your brain. I mean, really not good. Don't give it to children. Um, you'll see it in so many things. It's like the thing that's in um, 
what's it called, Coke Zero. So I'd rather you drink the Coca-Cola itself with the sugar in it rather than the Zero with this one in it, just because it's far more dangerous. Um, obviously, I don't recommend drinking Coke at all. Maybe use it to clean your car bumper, but yeah, it's um, it's not a good alternative. And it's truly accidental that that this is found as a a sweetener. Um, it happens to be sweet as a chemical. It happens to be sweet. Um, also, some people have um, scary risk, which is why you'll see um, can, contains phenylalanine, phenylalanine, hard to say fast. Um, you'll see that as a warning on, on say, you know, packets of chewing gum and, and so on, Pepsi and so on. Um, because people who have that disorder are, are at high risk. The thing that tells me, you know, alarm bells, is the fact that they have to put a warning on something like that anyway. You know, it contains this chemical thing, this amino acid, and which um, is dangerous to your health. But go on and eat it. Like, how many people go and get tested? I don't know. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, don't recommend it. Um, and this one, again, I've put the source there over a 22 year period, which is a decent study. Um, late 2012, the results came out that aspartame was linked to lymphoma and leukemia in both men and women. Don't have it, don't have it. Avoid like plague. Um, we've got a few others here that are more, um, more common. Um, saccharin, NutraSweet, you might recommend these sweet and low, sorry, you might recognize these. Stevia, so stevia is naturally occurring, it's in plants. Um, stevia is not bad. Um, it's very, very sweet, um, but you really use very, very, very little, and it is, it is from a plant, it is not a, like you, the stevia plant, like you can eat the leaves, and it's very very sweet so it's not like um something that's that's a, a chemical process um you can get it in just the leaves you can buy the plant and make it yourself you can get it ground up or you can get it in kind of like an oil a stevia oil um yeah very very sweet it is an acquired taste however not a huge fan myself i tend to use coconut sugar or if anything if ever i bake something or whatever and coconut sugar is purely the dried coconut sap um, and I mean, coconut honestly is an amazing, just amazing food in itself. Coconut sugar, coconut oil, coconut water, coconut milk. It's all brilliant um, in, in the right quantities. Uh, yeah. And yeah, I totally agree, ladies, that, that they're allowed to do this. Um, the problem is the people who control it, you know, they can do what they like. Um, it's it's most unfortunate, but it's up to us as the consumers to become aware, to really wise up and and understand. Because the, at least the good thing in this country is that everything has to be labelled, which is why I identify reading labels and understanding that. But also, um, we're allowed to ask questions. You know, we can actually ask. All this information comes directly from the Ministry of Health. Um, and when I wanted to know about supplements in the marketplace and the quality. I asked directly to the Ministry of Health and they told me directly an answer that there is no regulation, which is why I only consume USANA myself because it's the only brand that is regulated to a very, very, very high standard, pharmaceutically graded and backed, unlike all of the other ones available in this country, which are not regulated and therefore, and I quote, um, it is up to the sponsor of the product to ensure that it is safe for consumption. Um, but there, there are no tests to say that what's on the label is actually in the bottle. So, you know, again, another reason, like, gosh, why don't we regulate that? Um, scary stuff, scary stuff. Just to, just as a total, um, back to the sweetener thing. Look at this. A sweet tasting protein about 100,000 times sweeter than sugar. Isn't that amazing? 100,000 times sweeter. Um, and it can now be manufactured by genetically modified bacteria. Woohoo! <laughs> now, 
um, yeah, licorice flavoured, that's if you're asked to that sort of thing. Um, there's so many other things, you know, and, and you might recognise these. Um, sorbitol, xylitol, um, that's not as bad. You know, you might see some, some, you can, I think you can actually just buy that as it is, xylitol, it's like a white sugar. Um, but yeah, just be mindful, you know, if you're going to have sweeteners, I just think this whole, like, artificial thing about look if you just have no calories i.e have a sweetener instead you're still getting sugar as in you're still getting the sweetness but it's a chemical version that's going to mess up the body cause all this free radical damage anyway um, and your body can't metabolize it properly because it doesn't recognize it as a food um, just so you don't have calories when calories are what we need in order to function which is why we need at least, you know, 2,000 for the average person a day, two to 3,000 a day. Like, oh, just, yeah, gets me, it really gets me. And the truth about alcohol, caffeine and other stimulants, another great one, a um, couple of resources there. And also Dr. Libby's Rushing Woman Syndrome, she's got a lot there on alcohol, which is great. I've put benefits and drawbacks. I mean, look, Truth be told, if you were to ask me personally, my personal opinion is, um, if you, the benefits of alcohol are not actually from the alcohol itself. The benefits are from the, um, for example, in wine, um, the grapeseed extract, which is the antioxidant part, um, which you can actually take as a supplement, which I do take every day. Um, that is really the goods of it. Um, it's not really, you know, it, it's far worse for us than it is beneficial. Um, however, um, I do know some people who take it medicinally and have actually been prescribed a glass of wine a day. Um, I do wonder though if the, the, the sugar in that can just be, you know, they could cut that bit out and cut out the alcoholic part. Um, which does damage, and it's highly acidic, I mean, way acid, you know, like one glass of wine you'd have to have about 30 odd glasses of alkaline water, or 20, 24 glasses, I think it's about 30 odd for um, a glass of Coke or soda, so, you know, I mean, it's like, oh my god, would I, would I put all that acid in my body just so I can have the medicinal um, effects which I could actually just get if I took grapeseed extract that was a pure source I know what I'd rather choose but anyway that's just my opinion like I said um uh we've got the bottom line balancing the risks and the benefits New Zealand alcohol statistics pretty hardcore I mean 700,000 heavy drinkers in a nation of 4 million it's pretty scary um, billions of dollars, like lots and lots of just horrible things there, so I don't really go into it, but I did put it in there both sides because people ask me to be balanced in my views and therefore I've just given the information the best back, so yeah. Um, I've put a little bit here about meat and animal products, so the truth about that as well. Um, vegan diets are strange, it's a bit funny, does it come from an animal? No, eat it, yes, don't eat it, simple. Um, that's <laughs> Also, the difference between vegetarianism and veganism and different kinds of, of vegetarians. Um, also, the China study. So, it's a really, really good book if you, if you have a chance to read that. Um, and just a few, you know, if you're going to try it, a few tips on what you can do to, to bring more vegetarianism into your life. Um, it's good for your body and it's also good for the environment if you can have at least one day a week or so. To, to dedicate that to vegetarian foods or make it one week, one meal in each of your days, something like that. Um, so yeah, there's some challenges you might face and so on if you're used to having a lot of meat. Um, but there you go. I'm happy to share my experience with anyone who wants to become veggie or vegan or who needs some help um, with creating um, recipes or who also um, just wants to ask questions about it really. Um, dairy products, so yeah, I've got again, you know, some gaps there because it's really about if you wanted to know more to talk to me and also just to go to the resource um, because 
it's such brilliant information. You can get these books on um, from the library, excuse me, but also on on audiobook. So that's also really good if you're you're wanting to listen. And lastly, this is a good place. Um, we've got um, alkaline acid diet. Oh, so sorry, that's jumped up there, but basically. Um, avoid and suggested substitutes. So we've got that here. Avoid and sub substitutes. In this country, we are very fortunate that we have a lot of, um, you know, different kinds of milks. Um, if you can't make it yourself, but also, um, you know, we've got coconut yogurt and coconut ice cream and all sorts of things like that. So, um, you know, there's heaps and heaps and heaps of different things. Um, this chart here was supposed to be on the other page sorry it's jumped up there but um easy you know print it out put it on your fridge um what's highly alkaline this is good stuff the green and highly acidic and you know 20 percent acid 20 percent acid in your day so for me for example being vegetarian beans eat a lot of those um i do get fruits like that i do get the odd um emirates or um don't really eat a lot of the other ones but sometimes um, get some of these, you know, nuts and seeds and things. I will eat fruits in season, depending on what they are. Um, no, no, no. Do you have coffee and tea? Yep. Don't drink fruit juice. Um, miso, I have that occasionally. Um, I eat eggs, you know, every week. Things like that. Um, but no, none of, none of the other things. And then, predominantly this. So very, very easy to eat this way. Um, and obviously there are a million other things. This is just a basic list of the most common um, foods. And I believe, um, what else did I, did I have another one? I don't know why that jumped down there, but um, I thought there was another food chart. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, and that's it. So. Um, if you wanted to do a true health assessment for yourself to understand a little bit more about your own health, then simply go to rainmakerelite.usana.com, click on the link um, in the How Healthy Are You tab, and it will take you to a 10-minute um, test, and you can do that for yourself and find out what it is that you you need. And even me, I do that every now and again because my life changes and my priorities change and you know, my my um my habits change as well. So it's really good to just get clear on what is it that you need, you know, to tweak in your life and also what micronutrition you might be lacking and, and can improve. So um the other thing is as well, um if you are interested in getting into this as a lifestyle and understanding um more about how to teach other people about health and how to teach other people about um, better nutrition and um, you're, you're looking for something new, wanting to be part of a team, um, we're also looking for new team members to, um, to support us in our mission to teach other people and help other people. So please do um, either get in touch with the person who brought you along or you're most welcome to contact me. Um, my email is at the end of your book, lovelife at rainmakerelectteam.com. And I'd love to talk to you and see if this is a fit for you. So I wish you all well. Um, thank you so much for your participation. And indeed, um, if there are any questions at any time during your your next week's coming, then please, again, I'm, I'm at your disposal. So it'd be great to be in touch. Have a wonderful evening. And uh, I'll see you all again sometime soon. Awesome. Thanks very much, guys.